what this voting uh, entails here in Parliament, what uh, points from the European Council's proposal would you like to improve? Mm. Well, let me say it again. We would like an association with uh, delegated acts uh, of the European Parliament. We want to be involved in the governments of the democratic process and the community method of the recovery on own resources. We want a very quick proposal. We've already appointed our rapporteurs. I think the Commission needs to start discussions with them to put their proposal before Parliament as soon as possible. We'll be ready even as soon as September to uh, examine that proposal and assess it. Then, as you know, the MFF, well, we want to really go into the substance of some of the cuts that have been proposed. We think that those, some of those cuts do need to be corrected. As you know, on the MFF, we are the budgetary authority. We're going to have the last word, so we would like this process to allow us to overcome the objections that we have, particularly as regards the cuts, because they will simply make it not possible for the EU to reach the objectives that it has set itself. That's the Green Deal, matters relating to resilience. If there's less research, how are we going to be more resilient? Those are research funds. As I said before, funds to help us tackle the great challenges faced by the modern world. If we want to have a common policy on migration and asylum, as the German presidency has said, how can we cut funds for migration? I think that would make our response weaker. And so there are a number of points that the Parliament does wish to make in a constructive spirit. Um, to try and correct some of the mistakes that we think there still are in the proposed MFF. We'll take a first question from uh, the Skype uh, journalist. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, President. I'm from uh, Radio Española. How long do you think it will take to get an agreement, do you think? We've seen these uh, five days. Do you think Parliament will actually manage to change anything at all? Vinto. The President. Well, if I didn't think it was possible, then I wouldn't m say it was necessary to change things. I am convinced that we will have a, a positive response. I am confident of that. I trust the European institutions. And I trust that Parliament will be able to motivate the need and explain the need for certain changes. Once again, uh, as regards the recovery, we're very satisfied. There's uh, satisfaction in Parliament, in all the groups, and you'll see that tomorrow at the resolution that's going to be uh, presented. As regards the multiannual budget, well, there's some work to be done. Negotiations need to be started. And I think some of the points can be changed in the interest of everyone. We're, also, we're working for everyone's good and interest here. We're not alone. It's for all of the institutions. We're within a mechanism whereby Parliament represents citizens. And we recognize the competences and importance of the other institutions, too. So. I think this spirit benefits everyone. It allows us all to grow, and it will allow the European Union not just it will to will it will allow us to leave this crisis stronger than before. Important steps have already been made. As I was saying before, just uh, think of the debates we were having in March on the shared response, on shared debt. All of that seemed like taboo. But we held strong with a vision for the European Union. And I think this is recognized by the other institutions, the in Parliament as an institution. In May, it made a difference. And that has been recognized by everyone. 
The mechanism to be adopted that council did respect the institution's prerogatives and in particular the commission's competences to those seem to uh, have been uh, put in the background to some extent but they seem that role has been reasserted now as regards the reviews we don't wish to go into detail in examining national plans that's up to other institutions but the general positioning between national plans and european policies well here parliament must be listened to we want to count on the objectives of resilience and the green deal and so that is our task. We must represent the voices of citizens. As regards the positioning in order to achieve those objectives. And here Parliament's position is very important and I do believe it will be listened to. There is a question now from Marco Nemet uh, from Slovakia. Please Marco. Hi, I would like to ask Mr President if the Parliament will tomorrow agree the EU recovery budget, or there will be some troubles. Thanks. No, domani noi abbiamo una plenaria. Tomorrow we have an extraordinary plenary session to say what Parliament's position is on the conclusions of the European Council. We know that from the recovery onwards, the the procedure will require. Uh, clarifying the different instruments that have been set up on our own resources. We're ready straight away to uh, take a look at the Commission's proposal, but we do need to receive that proposal. I told President von der Leyen yesterday that uh, we would be ready from September to work on this, and it's now up to the Commission to send us that proposal. As regards recovery and the MFF. Well, again, we're, we're part of a process here. And we will start clarifying our positions and trying to reach solutions here. You know that the final vote on the MFF will not happen tomorrow. It will come in a couple of months' time. We have to have the negotiations first. We need to look at the different budget lines and see uh, where there needs to be in-depth analysis, where details need to be clarified. The work on the EU's budget, as you all know, is always a very detailed, in-depth piece of work. And it's also difficult, in some ways, to come up with a final proposal. John Beatriz Rios from Euraktiv, please. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I, I am sorry to follow up on what my colleagues asked, but first of all, um, I wonder if you discuss with President Charles Michel how is this dialogue going to take place? How is the Parliament going to negotiate all those changes that you would like to see in the proposal? When is that going to happen? Because we've seen a five-day council, and it seems difficult to see how we can proceed very quickly to make sure that there is an agreement soon and that the Parliament can vote. And if that doesn't happen, is the Parliament ready to vote down the proposal of the Council? Well, I think I've already said this quite clearly. 
as regards to the budget, what I heard from Pre President von der Leyen was that there is an intention to reflect on uh, Article 324 and applying that. That would mean uh, negotiations between the institutions, between the Parliament, the Commission, and not the the Council, but the rotating presidency. And this negotiation will go into the details of the MFF and we'll put forward our proposals. Above all, we're going to put forward this need, as we see it, to make certain corrections. And I think all citizens are expecting those to be made. But here we're talking about the MFF budget. As regards uh, recovery and own resources, well, I think I was very clear there. I've seen a degree of uh, surprise among journalists that uh, the heads of state and government spent five days with their discussions. I don't really understand that surprise. We wouldn't want the leaders of our 27 countries to arrive at meetings knowing exactly what the result would be. There needs to be debate, discussions. The interests of all parties need to be talked about. And I think that is a very useful spirit. I think it helps to build Europe if they had to spend another five days having meetings, I would have been happy. I wouldn't have been displeased by that. That's the democratic process. You reach shared joint conclusions. If I can add one observation of my own and on behalf of Parliament, because I discussed this with the other presidents. What we've understood from and learnt from the COVID experience and the experience of the last council, that we do need some changes in the institutional system in Europe. We need that. We need that so that we don't halt democratic processes, so that we can overcome this idea that uh, everything must be resolved by unanimity and a veto could halt democracy. I do think this is a observation that many people are making. And so this morning, we had a very intense discussion about the need to give life to one of the commitments of this uh, parliamentary term, which is the conference on the future of Europe. Parliament is ready. It's now up to the other institutions to to really launch the start of this major reflection on uh, the, on Europe. You know that Parliament has already adopted two resolutions on this. It's our, my commitment, it's a commitment of all political groups to get this process started as soon as possible. Today at the Conference of Presidents, that was uh, reiterated. So. This shouldn't just be a conference about talking about ourselves. It needs to be a conference where we can understand how we can tackle the future in a better way, how we can be more effective. And I think that's very useful. The lessons we're learning from COVID and the dy decision-making dynamics in the institutions, they all need to be clarified. Thank you. Any questions from the room? Yes, you first, and then you, madam. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Good morning, President, and thank you. 
Uh, the question is bit, uh, was going to be about the, your relationship with Charles Michel, but you've already answered that. On Africa, though, let me take uh, an example. Uh, Ivory Coast, uh, the, fir the Prime Minister uh, uh, has died. They're looking at elections for October. And like other African countries, uh, they're relying on this uh, EU Africa aid. Have you looked at that kind of case? During your debates, uh, your high-level uh, political debates, uh, have you looked at that? I mean, this whole country uh, is uh, suffering. So what is your reaction to the death of the Prime Minister of, uh, uh, of Ivory Coast? And what are you going to do to not forget Africa? Well, I can take what you're saying uh, simply to reiterate the, the need to strengthen the EU's role at international level. And our capacities for dialogue and uh, a strong presence on the African continent. I think this is a discussion that will also have to be had within the context of the budget. If we were to have a lower um, amount of resources, then our capacities will be reduced. You referenced uh, objectives, and those are strategic objectives. We need to be able to be uh, a interlocutor with a continent that to us is not just important, but we understand how much uh, interconnection there is between us and the African continent. Our, destins, our destinies are uh, intertwined between Europe and Africa, and these destinies uh, do need to be supported through a stronger political action and concentration, and all of this does need a political machine that has uh, sufficient resources behind it. Mr. President, there was a significant watering down of the rule of law uh, in, the, in the conclusion of the Council. I would like to know what the European Parliament intends to do on the, with, this, with the respect on this. Thank you. Um, mm, noi we would like to repropose that matter. We've understood that this uh, issue is uh, shared, but the instruments still need to be clarified. And in the Council's conclusions, there are some indications, but there are no real lines for intervention. So this is some remaining some way, in some ways in the background, but it's a topic that the Parliament cares about a lot. We're pleased that this issue has been reproposed to Council, but today we need to see exactly what intervention measures are to be used to support this. We can't support a reduction in our expectations for shared values. That's really the point we're at. As has been said, by all uh, group presidents today, a vast majority want to play an important role in uh, defining specific interventions. We think this is an open issue. We want to participate here. We will not be satisfied with just mentions of principle. Okay, I see there are still some questions on Skype. We'll take uh, Filippo Giuffrido and then Angela Mauro from the Huffington Post. Thank you. Good morning. Well, these have been uh, five intense days in council, that's what you said, and fortunately for our colleagues, they didn't, it didn't last uh, five extra days. Now, you gave us a list of points that Parliament is going to consider in negotiations. Young people, Erasmus+, Plus, research, horizon, migration. And there's the Just Transition Fund that's been uh, cut almost by a third. Is that also going to be part of your negotiations? Taking into account Parliament's prerogatives Could you possibly conceive of actually blocking this? Well, we are 
determined that Parliament as the budgetary authority is respected. We've said this for a long time, and you know this well. No political group wants to give up their prerogatives, and that's uh, being the budget authority. You put some other points on the list that I put forward, but we could add others too. As regards the transition, well, this is a strategic theme. If we don't help some countries in a more significant way to try and find a balance, then how are we to meet the challenges of the Green Deal? How will we meet the objectives of the Green Deal? And so in the budget lines among our priori the priorities will be the green transition too. It's a very important issue at the moment. It has an impact on many national standards and we hear this uh, desire. Just as happened with COVID, we wish to support those countries that are facing the greatest difficulties. And that's really the story we're learning from COVID. It's an opportunity to re relaunch other priorities. We don't have 27 countries with equal standards on emissions for various reasons, for various historical reasons. Each, and each country has dealt with them differently. Now with the lessons from COVID, we feel that those countries that are struggling most as regards emissions, well, there needs to be a shared response. It's in the interest of all at 27 to support these countries. That is the new spirit that we are uh, drawing from this, and we want to reinforce that spirit. When I met Jeremy Rifkin, well, it was very encouraging. He said that right now the environmental on the environmental transition. Only Europe can really claim to be a global leader. Others have lost the moral authority there. And I think that for Parliament, for the Commission, for Council, well, that's really the challenge for our recovery, for the recovery of our economies and the vision we have of the future. And we are really going to give it our all. Yes, can you hear me? We hear you very well. Good morning, everyone. Mr. President, you mentioned the cuts to research, Erasmus, immigration, asylum, and you called for negotiations on the MFF budget. I'd like to know why you think this happened. The European Council decided to cut uh, these very important, crucial uh, points. So who, who do you think is responsible for that? Is it a matter of uh, national um, interest? We heard about this, diff this split between North and South, uh, that there would be, particularly the, the Netherlands, calling for greater cuts in the budget. So how do you... Do you think you're going to interact, interfere to or interact to correct these changes? Now, we've also seen uh, the introduction of two own resources at, by next year. I think one will probably be plastic. And what is the other one? Thank you. Well, the other one is the one we've already mentioned. It's the ETS. That could be useful right now to uh, increase resources to support the debt that we are going to be incurring. It could also then be useful here to have more shared standards, and that's a very important point. As regards the conclusions from the Council, there's one thing I'd like to say. Clearly, from the Parliament's point of view, we followed 
those discussions day and night. We followed as they as it unfolded. Un folded. And at one point we were very concerned that they might not reach an agreement. We've always supported the need for an agreement. That's what's put on the table in the discussions that will be held with Parliament. And so having a conclusion f of that from that council was very important. At one point, we feared this might not be possible, that uh, discussions might be called off, that it might be postponed for months to come. But we did see that an effort was being made to try and reduce the distances between positions. That's extremely important. And basically, the agreement that was reached was one based on unanimity, and it does reduce the distances. There were very many claims put forward, many sensitive points, many different legitimate interests that were all on the, dis on the table during these discussions. And we recognize that the agreement reached in council uh, is an important one. And now, as I said before, we would like to have some discussions. We want to try and improve some of the instruments. Yesterday, as all 27 heads of state and government, we welcomed the result. We were pleased with it, with the result that had been achieved. We know that particularly as regards the multiannual financial framework, there is still work to be done. But you have all been witnesses to what I've said in previous months. You were all there. And I've always said that on the budget, it, the council doesn't have the last word. On the rest of it, then uh, there are prerogatives that we respect. We want to be um, involved to and try to strengthen the community spirit of the response to this emergency. And so that's the situation we find ourselves in. And I think this is the spirit which we need to have with us from the recovery, uh, from governance, for our own resources, and right up to the definition uh, and the and the needs for, of all states that will be taken into account over the next seven years and we hope that there will be a positive result there and the very last question I'd like to ask your opinion it's been said that uh, two different ideas really collided at the European Council. Um, so what do you think about this? Well, I think that in the end, the most precious thing prevailed, which we should always bear in mind. Maybe we pay less attention to it, but it's the it's community law. With regard to some curiosities, this has really clarified the competences of our institutions. And so some of those different curiosities weren't able to manifest themselves. And so I think that's what came out of the discussions at a certain point. Clearly, we do need to have solutions within the framework of the different institutions' competences. And I think the result that we achieved reiterated and reasserted that. There were perhaps attempts to put, give council new competences or perhaps sideline the commission. So I think this was a very good exercise. We never really think about how important the prerogatives are that are established in the treaties for the different institutions. 
we think that's something we can take for granted. And yet, throughout this process, we've seen how important it really is. We see that in the decisions made by the individual countries when the reference to community law and this extraordinary strength of the law and how important that is. I think in the Council's conclusions we could also, we also see that reflected. Thank you very much and have great holidays if we don't see each other again. You deserve a great holiday. Thank you. Allora,